in the 70s, board games and improv theater had a baby, and it was called the role-playing game. These games allowed a generation of kids to live out their dreams of slaying dragons and saving kingdoms, all while sitting in their bedrooms and basements. Today, gaming has moved into the cultural mainstream, and role-playing games are back with a vengeance. Join us now as five of these former kids come out of the basement and onto the internet to experience adventure, mystery, and obscure pop culture references. It's time for Roll for Combat. Hey everyone, welcome to Rule for Combat. I'm your GM and host, Steven Glicker, and in this week's episode, the boys continued their battle with the big bad boss, and they decide to finally get rid of the ads. So as I've said before, this was by far the longest battle we've ever done. This thing took something like two months for us to complete, because it just keeps going and evolving and changing. So, there's only so much I can talk about in a battle. So I decided instead, I'm going to just talk about our experience with the show, since this is kind of coming to the end. And I thought for the next couple of weeks, I'll just talk about that. So I thought maybe this week I'll talk about the adventure path itself, because it's not very often that you get to run these adventure paths, let alone finish them. And I almost exclusively only run adventure paths, and I'm going to talk a little bit about why. So one of my favorite things about adventure paths, and what really had me hooked on them right away, is the concept of this generalized story and that it actually had a place for your characters to grow. In the past, you were doing this already. Like, when we were playing individual modules, we would basically take a first-level character and find a module for them to run, and then when that module was over, then we'd have to find another module, like if they're up to fourth level, and then up to seventh level, and so forth. So I was already doing that, and one of the problems was is it was hard to kind of stitch together the modules. And we're talking about back in the AD&D first edition days. Now the modules back then were great, although, I dare you, go back and read some of the old modules. You won't believe how little is in those modules. You probably have fond memories of Queen of the Demon Pits, Q1. I love that module. Here's the crazy thing. It's almost totally empty. There's so little in these modules. They're like 15, 20 pages. They're really small. And all they have in them is maps and statistics and just a little bit of flavor text. And that's it. It really is fascinating how much was built in our heads back when we were kids. Queen of the Demon Pits is actually a much larger one. That's 32 pages. That's one of the big ones. But most of these are really small if you go back and see how tiny these modules are. And you'd be amazed, especially when you compare them to modern day adventures, just how slim they were and how bare bones these modules were. So you really had to do a lot of the work and the creativity when you stitched these modules together. When I first read the Shackled City and Dungeon magazine, it's like a light went off in my brain. Because at that point, they did have these super modules. They did eventually have the concept of these like 128 page modules that would take you like seven levels. But here is something that would take you from level one to level 20. The whole experience, every aspect pre-built and made for you. And Shackled City has some real big issues. Obviously, it was the very first one. There's some dungeons in there that are literally like a hundred rooms of fighting. It is like, it is a brutal, brutal module. And you need to really rework the Shackled City if you want to run it. But then, as many of you know, Age of Worms, I still consider the best adventure path. Some of the best modules ever written. The best story. Just the best of everything. It was so freaking good. And I was hooked. And we ran it. The same guys you hear playing this podcast, we ran Age of Worms, and we were hooked. Ever since then, that's all we've been doing is adventure paths. We like the whole concept that they're written by professionals. We like the whole concept that they put in cool new gaming systems, that there's a connective tissue between each adventure, that you're going on this very long adventure where you have a main goal. And as many of you probably know, one of my side gigs is video games. And I've seen a trillion talks. I go to GDC and E3, 
And one of the most successful video games of all time is The Sims. And one of the reasons why The Sims is so successful, and a lot of these open world games are so successful, is this concept that they're giving you multiple stages of accomplishments to do. I've probably mentioned this in past uh, podcasts, but I'll say it again. And this is actually what you do in your life. You probably don't realize it, but in your life, you have like super long-term goals that might take you five to ten years. You have long-term goals, things you might be doing over the next year. You have mid-term goals, things you might be doing over the next six months. You have shorter-term goals and you might be doing over the next month. Then you have really short-term goals, which you might be doing over the next week. And then you have like immediate goals, which is something you're going to be doing that day, that hour, or that minute. And by having all these different goals, it always keeps you involved and interested because you can switch your attention to each of these goals. That is why The Sims work so well. That's why things like Red Dead Redemption or MMOs and all these others work, especially the really good ones, because they give you different levels and sets of goals. So if you want to become a really good GM, you got to give everyone multiple sets of goals. Now, Adventure Paths kind of do this. They already do it. They don't give you a lot of goals, but they do give you, okay, here's the overall goal. Here's the goal of this adventure that we're on. Here's the goal of this chapter. And then here's the goal of this immediate dungeon. Usually you have about four to five goals that you're always juggling. And then, of course, there's even managing your character and then anything I'm throwing at them. By doing that, you take away a lot of the emphasis on the game system and the mechanics of the system. And you could really look at what the game is all about. And that's storytelling, that's character development, and that's role-playing. And by having these adventure paths, they give you a framework for the story. This framework for Dead Sons, I actually really thought was really well done. Especially for the very first adventure path ever. They went to a lot of different worlds. It was a pretty good doomsday weapon. We got to see lots of different types of fights. We got to see lots of different types of environments. And most interestingly, they managed to take a sci-fi setting, which is always a problem because, well, why can't I just teleport wherever I need to go? Why can't I just fly to wherever I need to go? How do you make it difficult for the PCs to get to where they need to be? And they did that really well. They actually did that. I actually liked the second adventure the most for that, where they had to go to this protected jungle. It was like a sanctuary, so no one was allowed in, and then you were really restricted in what technology you had. So they felt like you know, like modern day explorers would getting dropped in like the middle of the Amazon with like very little equipment and that they have to really fight on their own. I really like that. And then even this part, they're kind of in the middle of the galaxy, kind of in this like lost quadrants and they're just stuck with what they have. So it worked out very well. I actually thought they did a great job with this. And as for the adventure path itself, they did a good job with having two bad guys. You sort of had the adventurers that are caught in the middle between these two groups that are fighting over this huge MacGuffin, and then the adventurers have to defeat one group and now defeat the other group before the MacGuffin gets taken and blows up the universe. For those of you who read a lot about the hero's journey and know a lot about general storytelling, you can see that they hit a lot of familiar beats in this adventure path. That obviously wasn't an accident, and I think they did a really good job at pulling it off. It felt like all six adventures were really well connected to each other, It felt like you can really flow between one and another and another. I even like how the first adventure was kind of a giant MacGuffin in itself in that you had all this like infighting and had all these factions and that ended up being a nothing, a big nothing burg in the end. You didn't even need that actually by the second adventure that kind of all went away. So it really felt like you were changing the focus and changing who the bad guys and what the PCs had to focus their attention on. They were always running from one place to another. Again, I like that. I like that the PCs are on a time limit. I felt like they had a lot of pressure on them. I felt like they had to keep moving forward, and I think this worked really well. Anyhow, I hope you all like my little diatribe. If you have any questions about this or want to know about some of the adventure paths I've run in the past and some of the ones I'm going to be running in the future and some of the ones I've read and what I thought about them. By the way, if you ever want to run an adventure path, Iron Gods, it's actually my other second probably favorite one of all time. Again, really, really well done. You can hit me up on the Discord, of course, at discordroll for combat I'm always there. And if you want to join and listen to us, you can do the $10 Patreon. And just yesterday, we were supposed to run a secret game. And a couple of Patreons showed up to listen to us. 
and we couldn't get any technology to run. Like, seriously, it was a joke. Every single time we got something fixed, something else broke. And we finally got everything fixed. One of the players' internet went down because of a storm, and it was out for the rest of the night. So we couldn't even start it. And it happened, like, it was like, okay, we got everything. Oh, wait, where'd he go? What happened? And then I get a message saying, up, power line came down, internet dead for the next day. I'm like, really? Are you kidding? So for those of you who listen to us, you listen to us BS and just talk and chat with you guys for two hours. That's all it was. It was just a BS session for two plus hours of the Dead Sons guys and a few extras just talking to the fans. So if you're interested in that, we do that on a regular basis. We record usually two shows a week. The dates are always a little different. It's always around 8 o'clock Eastern to about 11 o'clock Eastern. Usually Monday through Thursday. That's when we usually record. And if you want to hear us and talk to us live, just join a $10 Patreon. You can do that going forward. And you can see that just going to patreon.wolfercombat.com. Anyhow, with that, let's get to this week's episode. Last we left off, you guys stormed the bridge. You killed what you thought was the boss. You killed what you thought was the boss's minions. And then you realize the boss is actually, not only is he invisible, not only is he flying, not only is he blurred, but he's still very much alive and taunting you. And no one knows or can see him. So you got that going. Except for for me. Except for you. So you got that going for you. And you were doing really well. And then all of a sudden, the door to the west broke open. And there was this one creature that would have been absolutely devastating. The Moor, who could have, like, devoured your soul. And almost devoured uh, Akiro's soul, I believe it was. Yes. Very close. But Akiro made a good roll and didn't die. And then you guys promptly killed him. So right now you're in the middle of the fight and it's their turn. And there's still one of those Corvos. There's this strange ghoul guy who looks like this ghoul with a really long tongue. And he also has like some wicked sword and some horrible plasma weapons. So you're like, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that guy. And he's also there. And there's also a door to the east that's still closed. So God only knows what's going to come out of that room. So that is where you are right now. You, you killed everything. You killed that huge gate crasher guy. That monstrous guy that was going toe-to-toe with Mo. Yes, I polymorphed him, I think, right? Chris Beamer is playing the tiefling technomancer Akiro the Just. Oh, uh, you tried to. Yeah. You just, you just no. Mo, Mo finally decided to use his new weapon and is hitting for like nearly a hundred points a hit. And now those hit it three times, go. right? Yeah, three times because he remembered. Oh wait, he could do that. So, Kozumbuja, whatever these things are called, they go. <laughs> and um, and you guys have barely been scratched. In fact, you guys have very little damage. Oh, and I completely forgot. Cheddar self. And exploded and uh, himself in the Well, that is sacrifice. the part that sadly I remember because the tragedy. Bob Marquis is playing the human envoy, Rusty Carter. I, just, I did not I forget her. that for the record. Jason McDonald is playing the Ahsoki mechanic, Tuttle Blacktail. Oh, did I give uh, Hiroji C invisibility? Do you remember, Seth? I was. Just, I'm sorry. I had a moment of silence for Cheddar. Ch- Cheddar. Cheddar was the best of us. Seth Lipton is playing the Lashunta operative, Hiroji. He was. Oh, yes, he was. He was also the smartest of us. He always had the answer to every problem. I think he did, Chris. John Statz is playing the Vesk soldier, Mo Dupinski. Yeah, uh, well, Akira's the only one who can see. Um, I didn't cast it on on Hiroji. No, No. you cast it on yourself. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I gotta do that. Hiroji should. So have let's have them go. So this weird gobbly guy, the guys with all the broken arms and like limbs, and he's gonna go. And let me just get work. the monk. Oh, you're right, the mad monks. That's what they are. The mad monk, and he's like gonna walk up. He's gonna walk up to uh, hold the line. 
while he's setting that up, can I make a prediction? My prediction is after as soon as we defeat these guys, the next door Pain? on the right opens up and we have to deal with another batch of these and then it's the boss fight after that. So so prediction. so there's an element so there, so this is a marathon, it's not a race. It's not a sprint. Not a sprint. It's a sprint. Kill the ads first. Well my cooldowns. When I got when I got someone in my face it becomes a sprint. <laughs> Well, all right. The Mad Monk tried to attack and missed uh, by a mile. He just sort of came up. The weird ghoul with the long, long tongue whips out a nasty-looking plasma rifle and decides to do a full attack. We'll do one on Akira. Oh, thank God. And then one on Mo. One on me? Wow, I rolled a six, a five, and a five. These guys... Well, welcome to our world. <laughs> cold. They are cold as ice. And now, the mysterious man, only known as Inviso Man, goes. Now, you don't know where he is, but you do see the ball of acid that was sitting up at the top of the throne. Roll on over. Do, 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 do. Oh, there we go. It goes See, right on Cheddar to Aeon and Tuttle. Akira are the closest. Or Hiroji. Yeah, Tuttle. Aeon Tuttle. So the ball. What did I do to him? Give me a reflex save, Mr. Aeon Tuttle. Hey, another five. Look at that. Uh, five, 18, five, 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 five. Eighteen. Not even close. So, uh oh. How much does that corrosive haze do? It does. Are you even affected by acid? That's the first acid question. Acid is a yes. Ooh, acid is a yes. 4d6, that's it. Wow, whopping 14 points of damage. Big whoop. So that happens, but something else much more horrible is going to happen. Oh, so much I think I think you take you take an additional ten damage at the end of your next turn. That is true. Thank you for making sure we remember that rule. That is a good rule to remember. Because I have that spell, so. And to be rewarded for your good rulings, mm. you get targeted again by another horrific spell. In fact, you were hit by this spell before, but you're gonna get hit by again because he knows you can see him. He sees you. Can, can, can I see him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's saying horrific things. <laughs> Where and is he? He is... The problem is you don't, can't, you don't want to show everyone else, probably. Nope. I will ping it. He's way okay. up there. Wow. And you... I might have a little cover, maybe. It looks like a little cover. You feel as if your flesh is going to be rewired into a computer program again. Give me a will save. Oh no, I hate making saving throws, especially will saves. Here All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here comes a one. Here comes the will save. Oh, 16. 70 rolls for a 16. That is not even close. Wait, let me see if I have any lawyers. Oh, <laughs> I have to have a lawyer somewhere. Lay the hammer down. I have good news. Uh huh. It only does 11 points of damage. Uh, okay. That's the good news. <laughs> That's the only good news. Like rewriting the code that makes up a computer program. You feel your DNA is painfully being rewired into biological functions to mimic the cold and rigid processes of a computer. Your movement speed is now halved, and you are taking 3D6 slashing per round as your internal organs are shifting and transforming to become more like inner components of a robot. Oh, he has a secret under his skin. Dude, dude you're, you're the kid in Akira. This is awful. Your body mm. is becoming visibly more robotic. Your voice is tinny and halting. Your movements are jerky. And your face is un unmoving and emotionless. You're flat-footed. You take a minus two penalty to all sense motive checks, as well as charisma and dexterity based skill and ability checks. So reflex saves. You are being turned into the machine. For how long does that go? Until you die? Forever! <laughs> until, <laughs> until you are a board. Until you become one with the machine. Now I do uh, have the damage resistance. I you wonder if get that... 
Nope. You get to attempt a fortitude saving throw to half the uh, spell each round. So, mm-hmm. oh, actually, you know what? You might actually. Uh, it's slashing, so I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, it's it's damage reduction against physical attack. And just for fun, this uh, this uh, guy is going to come up to you, another mad monk, and try to attack you, Akira. Uh, now I'm kind of I'm five feet in the air though, right? Yeah, but he still hits you. Yeah, uh, he hits you with the thirty-four, and you're flat-footed. Uh, but you are uh, just yeah, it, it only does seven points of damage to you. Oh, you are turning into a machine. Ugh. And my movement is half. Huh? Yeah, Rusty is up. I'm just pleased. Dear God, thank you, Akiro. Actually, got an upgrade. Um, ah, I, well, I, I mean, let's be honest. Team. His his evil, you know, sort of subterranean, you know, biology has always been a problem for me. Now he's finally becoming useful. All right. So uh, um, my my quick thing is, Mo, point at the target you want right now. Four words. Oh, I'm pointing. Great. I choose that one. And he is going to be the target of everything that I'm going to give him. Uh, now he chose a hero. Okay, go. Yeah, Mo's on the front line there. He can actually do damage. He's right after me. That's why I was talking to him. Okay, so that's the one that's going to be directly to the left of you. I'm assuming, Mo, or is it the one that's actually in front of me? Yeah, the one that I'm across. Yeah, pretty much should okay. be good. Either is fine. Okay. I can hit Either both. Either is fine. Uh, how about the one right in front of a hero? Because maybe that's hurting him. Sure. Love it. So that's going to be target for plan A and B. First things first, plan A is move action. Get him! Everybody, get him! Get that one! And I point very, very dramatically for my second action. Uh, yes. It's time to actually use the real physical grenade that's in my rifle. It will be the last grenade I will ever be able to shoot. So this is the end of that. Uh, that's the... F- Frag grenade four. I'm looking for it. Uh, I'm shooting it over the head, so I'm going to get all three of the enemies. That's the, that's all. Okay, just roll a. Yeah, yeah. I, I attack the ground with a grenade. It's that. Oh. It's just you hit. Yeah. If you want me to put out the twenty foot spread, but I think you understand. I know where it goes. I know where you're going. Yep, you don't right. need to. So you can uh, hit yes, all of them. Yes, but as part of an attack action, I make a bluff against though the one that is next to Akira. Let me do that bluff action before I do damage. One of them missed the four. That is correct. Not good enough. Ooh, Reroll. A three. That's not too good. Oh, oh we rolled the one. one. <laughs> Holy crap. For a 25. Wow. All right. Well, it's very rare, but I do. Apparently, when I used to say I will never lose a bluff check, it turns out in the higher levels, apparently I suck. So, okay. You can still roll a one. You can still roll a one. In fact, the three was also a problem. But anyway, it's 46 damage against the other three monsters. Hold on. Uh, wait, is it type 3 or type 4? Uh, whatever 4d6 is, I can pull it up. Oh, it's type 3. Yeah, it's type 3. Okay. Yeah, that sounds right. And this is the last time I'm using the actual physical grenade inside the gun, not the phantom one. I used the phantom one in an earlier fight. Mm-hmm. Time to pull it all out. Yeah, Here this come... is the final fight. Uh, Here comes the one. 12. Wow, 12 damage. Okay, well, I did 12 to 1 and 6 damage to the other two, but hey, there it is. Mo's up. Oh boy, he circuits on Mo. Um, yeah. Um, I thought I turned it off last turn. Uh, I'm gonna confirm that. I remember him saying that. And yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah, but I, I don't. I'm not using it now anyway. So I wouldn't. All right, I anyway, turn it so. off. Uh, I just whap, whap, whap. Three hits. I'll let you put in the minuses, if that's Great. okay. Yeah, it's faster sure. that way. I'm just going to do a uh, attack on the one in front of me twice. Sure. With my Infernal Flame Doshku. Two. Ooh, misses. Wow. Nice. I attack again. Three. Wow. Three. Job. <laughs> and I attack for a third time. You get a minus four or a minus six? It's minus four. Well, I get a minus. Uh, t- well, I get plus four from Rusty. I believe. Only two, because I rolled a one on my okay. block check. Oh, okay. We, we, so we, I, I rolled my like four. four All right, you uh, hit. Also, you that do... was the one down one from that, Steve. 46 points of damage. Wrong target. No, no, that's the, that's the right target. That's okay. He actually the, still yeah. hit. Because it's minus four. That's the one in front of him. 
Yeah, all right. That's all right. Well, that's the one he targeted. Then he doesn't get plus two against that one, though. Eh, he's all right. Now, you're on the acid on Tuttle. Do you want to move off of it? I do indeed. Um, you don't have to. No, I'm debating whether to actually go to the other door and try to lock it while these guys work on these on the guys in front of us, or if I should just keep it simple and just attack. I think I'll keep it simple and just attack. So yes, I move off the acid and I attack. Sixteen points of damage. Nice. When you take ten points of acid damage, it's still lingering around. Yeah, it's the the up. Yeah, it's hard. It was a difficult situation. Uh, what's my what's my negatives uh, to attack one of those uh, twisted uh, ring monk type undead guys through minus everybody two. else that's in front of them? Minus two. It's only minus two. Yeah. All right. Well, then I'm going to do my my patented uh, cloak hide cloak move dodge hide shoot thing. I heard the word hide twice and shoot only once. That's that's true. Because I actually I don't remember. <laughs> am I, do I have my cloak activated? Because I seem to have a vague memory of it. You yeah. always have your cloak activated. Yeah, I have it. I have yeah. it activated, don't I? Yeah, you're always doing it. Seth, yeah, you get a plus one you. from Mo, uh, and the top one gives you a plus two from Rusty. Yep. Just like, yeah, I'm just not 100 percent remember, remembering what happened last time. I was wondering if there was anything tricky that I forgot. Okay. So uh, let's let's move a little bit and shoot a little bit and then move a little bit. How about that? Uh, first, I'm going to move. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, that's 40 feet. And thence, I'm going to trick him with my tricky trick shot. Yep. And uh, trick attack. And so that I, I'm using stealth for that. So let me roll that. That's enormous. 45. Uh, wow, someone uh, finally rolls a natural 20. That's pretty good. And Wait, was, was now, that a good roll? I don't know, Steve. Now, I haven't heard now, you now, I, now I shoot him. Shoot them both. And meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm going to roll much more damage. Okay. You can roll your... And we've officially not focused on one target. Good job. Sneak Good job, attack guys. damage. I thought I, I thought I did exactly that. I thought you I thought you were all focusing they on both the one that was in front of. No, they both been hit. That's fine. That's fine. It's okay. They both got it's to die. All right. It's all right. okay. These are exactly heavy hitters. These monks. Yeah. They're not the ones causing problems. I'm telling you that right now. It's true. Uh, any damage is best. Twenty seven. Yeah, the time we're taking to kill them is waste of time. Well, what, what, whatever he doesn't kill, I'll mop up. I, I agree with you. In theory. In theory. All right, and now I uh, move and hide. Move and hide. He loves to move and he loves to hide. Are you rolling again? Or are you done? Yeah, is my stealth 25 and 26 when I'm using trick attack, or is it uh, just or is it 24 and 25 when I'm using trick attack? Well, I you get, get a plus, plus get... like, you get, you get a plus something. Just roll. Yeah, I got a plus, I got a plus one. Yeah, when you're doing trick attack. That's like separate. And so, that, so that's me hiding. Akira is up. Akira, you're turning into a robot. Robot. Why are there two of me? I see two of me on the screen. Oh, because I accidentally copied you. Goodbye. I killed them off. I killed your clone. Sorry about that. Um, hmm. Do I have my haste circuit on? You do have your haste circuit on. And you will be able to make, at the end of your turn, a new save to try to mitigate. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to disengage haste circuit. Okay. I am going to... You have to talk like a tinny robot. I am a robot. I am now more machine than man. Mr. Roboto. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. I fart. <laughs> You're taking your five foot back, five foot step back as five, a robot. Five foot, yes, five foot step. <laughs> Are you doing I the robot? I did step and I... <laughs> Fire ah, twice at the guy. Well, yeah, fire twice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I get any? I get a plus something, right? Plus one, right uh, on that one because of uh, Mo. Well, I don't know which one. There's two in front of you. Uh, attacking the one to the. the I give plus one to left. both. Okay. Okay, plus one. There you go. My disruption rifle. Four. Great. Here's my second attack. Eight for twenty-one. It's actually not bad, but their AC is higher than that. 
close. Okay. Yeah, that's wow. They're Give gonna make a save now, right? A fortitude uh, save. Will save or for, fortitude save? Every round, you can do a fortitude save to half the damage it's doing to you. You make yes. it, so you only take seven points of damage, or six. Sorry, six points. You are being turned into a robot. There is no way out of this. This is it, uh, no way out. You are being turned into a robot until either you die, it dies, or something occurs. But it's going to be going on for a long time, Roboto. Just, just to confirm, when he becomes a robot, will he be a subservient robot? I could yes. be the new Cheddar. Cheddar, new version. Yes! That's right. Oh, thank God. That would be amazing. Four armed attack on Mo. And he tries to attack once. Misses. Hits. With a 19 for Ow. seven points of damage. Would have been 19, but you're too good. Miss, miss, hit, miss. Rolling 15 miss. That stinks. Okay. This guy, he's going to, uh, the ghoul guy, he's got his big old gun out. He's shooting Mr. Roboto. Partial cover. Twice. Hits for 17 points of damage, but because of fire and Mr. Roboto is uh, semi-immune, he only takes 12 points of damage from the first attack. And the four completely. This is the second attack, and he's like, ah, I will get you, robot. I love that. I love that you're a robot. And next... The acid cloud. It goes back on to tunnel. Give me a replay. Twenty three. Guess what? That actually is exactly what you needed. So does it do any damage? It negates. So you jump out of the way and you do not take the damage. Nice. How about that? Not bad. Not bad at all. And then he decides. To do his favorite thing of all. Let's see. Explosive blast. Everybody give me a reflex save. Oh. Mo fails. Rusty succeeds. And Tunnel fails with a one. I, uh, <laughs> I do not do well. Roji fails. Carol's the only one, and you get a minus two to this because you're robotic. Oh, wow. Chris? Chris? I, I think he's become one with the machine. <laughs> I think he well, is. Well, that's one true. He is machine. becoming a robot. Yeah. He is one with the machine. Let's just assume he missed for now. <laughs> I'm going to do it for him. Yeah. And he misses by a mile. So everybody missed except for Rusty. Wow! <laughs> I think that's a little suspicious. If uh, I, I've made a deal so. with the enemy, you obviously have. Sorry, of course I'm joking about that. <laughs> I would never do something like that. Six, damn, thirty-two points. How? What kind of damage is that? Fire damage. Uh, Chris probably doesn't take damage. He only has a dr five to fire, so he takes less than that. Does anyone have fire resistance? Tell I believe I have DR10. Uh, ooh. That's right, believe... because you are an Aeon. Or he's just cool. I have listed here uh, damage reduction 9 slash. That's physical. Probably damage. physical. That's physical. All right, that makes sense. Okay, let me do all these then. Tuttle takes 22. I, I, wait, wait. I, ha I have improved evasion. Sorry. Well, that's always good. You take. Wait, what's 20... happening? You took 27 uh, damage took from 20, a fire the blast. Explosive blast went off on everybody. Wait, I got to save. Yeah, we rolled failed. for you. You oh, failed. Must only take 16. And the evasion means I think you get half even if you fail. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half, uh, it would have been a half, it's always half or none. That's right. Is it improved evasion? Yeah, it, it is. Improved it's evasion. That's right. Evasion, so. Oh, nice. He only takes 16. So that was a lot of damage in one round. 20, 22 points. 27, 32, 16, Ouch. and 16. That was a good spell. Well, I, 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 have, to, I have to make a comment here, though. Uh, I'm upset 
that I will not get flawless victory. I think that's the first damage I've taken <laughs> since, I, since ah, I've come damn. back into the game yet. No, you took some damage. You took some. Wow. Not a lot. Not a lot. But now you kind of know where that fireball came from, kind of, maybe? Maybe. 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 We have an we'll attack see. vector. Well, you might have an attack vector. You might. You might. That's correct. Uh, one of those mad monks attacked Mo and hit once for uh, Se seven. But yeah. yeah. Rusty is up. We're lucky, lucky Rusty. Now, if you want. You well, can maybe all right. Do, They're uh, both still there. So. Yes. Fine. All right. Mo, since you ended up attacking not the one that you made your target last time, I'm going to change my target. The one directly next to you. One space to the left of you is going to be the one I'm going to target for the, for this. First of all, that's uh, get him. So that's the one on the north side. And we're rolling well again. All right, re-rolling that. Four. He's crawling his way up the ladder. A twenty. And there we go. Ding 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 ding. ding. All right, everyone has plus four against this guy. Which guy? The one. You missed. That one. That's cool. the one you just missed. The one I just oh, missed. You right? just, Everyone has plus four you, against that one. Are you going to move at all? Um, yeah, okay. No, I can't, actually. I'm sorry. I used my move action. Forget him. I can't. Mo is up. He's got two of these guys left. Jeez. Wait a minute. Yes, yes, I can. I activated my haste circuit last time. Do you have a haste circuit? I believe Yes, of course lying. I do. Everyone has of a haste circuit. Now. Hey, we all have Liar. a haste circuit. Liar. I do not have any. You want to move closer to Cheddar uh, or um, uh, Tuttle? No, I'm uh, moving Rusty. to the other side of Hiroji. Actually, two north of Hiroji. There you go. Jeez. Okay. He's going closer to the bad guy. Good job, Mo. Like you're on top of Hiroji. Yeah, now. I, I tried to go too higher than that. It didn't. It released. Oh, do you want to go higher? Get him off me. Do you want to go higher? Yes, Mom? 10 feet higher. Two spaces to the north of that. You got it. You hit. 46 points of damage. He's still alive. He's still kicking. He's taken over a hundred points of damage, but no, they they take they like it. damage. They they like damage. All right, well, not that much damage. Now he's dead. Thank God. All right, the other one's and taken at least attack. fifty as well. So the two and ain't gonna do it. Mo is done. There is acid on that square tunnel. <laughs> if you're gonna move off of it. Just letting you know. Oh, I'm going to move off of it. And now I am going to do my plan where I'm going to go to the other door and try to seal it. I like that idea a lot. Which door? So that's a double move. He's running away. Yeah, it'll take that a mouse, round or two. That mouse it may is be buggered off. Don't everybody. leave us. Don't leave us. Oops. The Kiroji's up. Kiroji just got hit. Flawless Oof. Denied. Yeah, I know. Denied. Um, and this is the sixth round. Is that true? We are in round seven, actually. So, the, oh, so yeah, some seven. people do, six. Some no, people six do. Round. You know that game, six Dark Souls. Round. Some people do Dark Soul runs, complete the whole thing without taking a single hit. Oh, that's amazing! That's amazing. Yeah, the, the, yeah, you can get good at that game. I like it. Oh, I've seen. Yeah, and then they play like the, um, the worst guy with like a stick. Yep. And then they yep. and they beat the whole game. Without, without even getting hit. It's All insane. right. Okay. So can I run through the uh, holographic di displays, or is that or, or the squares? Uh, eh, I'll say no. I, no, I'll say you can't run right through them. You can run next to them because I say that they're on pedestals. Uh. uh oh. Okay. So I, I guess I, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna move. You can tell me if I move. They're designed to be stood next to. Yeah, you can go there. That's fine. It's perfect. So I do that. I do my trick. Now, ad advice, telepathic advice from the from the from the hive mind. Do do I want to try to finish off the monk, or do I want to start working on the Reznar? I think you want to finish off the monk. Kill the monk. All right. So I'll shoot the monk from there. And so here's my here's my trick. I feel like I'm gonna have to go all out on the boss because I'm the only one who can see him before I die. Well, yeah, so or so can your uh, cooldowns. Can you help 30, the rest of 31, us here? 31, did my trick succeed? I can't. I looked that spell up. It's personal only. I can't even cast it on someone else. All right. Uh, 31 on, which one are you doing it on? On the monk? The uh, Yeah, it succeeds against the mad monk. Well, he hits for 16, and then let's see all the super awesome colossal damage being done. Oh, yeah. 
Wow. And another 22. 38 damage. That was not that great. Wow. Yeah, that was not that great. That's uh, Kira, pretty bad roll. Turning wait, wait, I'm finishing, I'm finishing my move. Oh, right, sorry. I forget that you are annoying. Oh, what? Where's he going? Where's he doing? Oh, yeah, there we go. He's hiding in plain sight and moving over there next to one of the robots, next to one of the zombies. Now, Akiro. Mr. Roboto, you are up. I say, Mo, please cover me. I'm going Afgalator. Uh, I can see him, right? He's just sitting there because he's using his move action to move the asset and his standard action to cast spells. So he's That's like, correct. That's correct. Right. He's just sitting up there, flying around, pretending say, like there's no care in the world. Witness me. I am shooting him now. And I attack him twice. I need something to attack, though. Should I just roll d20? Nope. There he is. You can uh, attack that one. <laughs> well, how far away is he? I'm going to move it over there. Oh, you want me to put him like he's, um, he is from you. Pretty far, actually. He's 85 feet away. Oh, man. All right, hold on. Let me just check my gun real quick. Uh, my gun has a range of 50 feet. So you're going to minus two. So that's an issue. Where is he? He's, he's up way, in that spot. That he... Way up at the top. The very, very top center he's, and he's and he's up too right he's up to the ceiling 30 feet up he's up against the ceiling and he's blurred too but he's right there around there yeah there you're gonna move over okay well, well how far move. is that though well if you're gonna move that you only have half speed so so i can, can move swift action far. activate hay circuit i can i can that move there takes place nope it's hay circuit activates next turn oh all right well that's fine I only got 30 movement, huh? That sucks. Can I shoot him from there? Yes, right? Because he's up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I got a minus two for that. The minus. I'm not going to. Actually, no. I can use my scope, and it's not a minus at all. Uh, so I don't have to move that far, even. Cool. Don't forget, he is displaced. So you'll get a 50% miss chance no matter what. There all right. I'll go. move there. I'm going to take one shot. All right. Here we go. Here goes the first shot of the night on the main bad guy. What kind of, is this a weapon attack? Yeah, he's using a weapon. It's, it's my best thing right now. I've used all my third level spells are gone. Uh, okay, here we go. No minus for range or anything. 50% miss chance. Ah, 50? 50? Here it is. You can kill him. Here it is. All your numbers. Right, this so... is the best part. You thought, you thought mirror image was good. Nah, that's, that's, that's for, uh, that's for the, the Little Leaguers. Low, I'm a D100, is a miss. Okay, here we go. A 100! There we go! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Give him plus one damage for that. Nice! You know, you actually get a minus two because you're turning into a robot as well, by the way. I forgot about that. Wait, a minus two to what? To all your decks. Up. Yeah, because all your decks saves everything. <laughs> well, read that again, because it's important for about because I know about my reflex save and stuff. Well, I thought it was just skills and uh, saving throw. Ability checks. Actually, you're right. Skills and abilities, so that's fine. All right, so um, that's... You hit that's... 27 points of damage. Finally, a little bit of damage. Nice. And, 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 Put and, him on and, the board. Yeah, no need for haste circuit. I'm, and like they, I'm, like they can see where I'm shooting, so witness my shot, and so you can have an idea. Okay, of yeah, I'll square. give it to them. Now, here's the thing. You got to give me a fort save because we uh, are turning to a robot. I do. It's going to go on forever. He's a robot with no will. 14 does not succeed. Eight points of damage. Yeesh, I think I have hit points now. Oh, you're into hit points. This ain't good. Ain't good. Is, there, oh. is there anything like really tricky you might be able to pull? Like, Can you teleport your physical body elsewhere and leave all the robotics behind or anything like that. <laughs> that'd be awesome yeah so that he would like you mean die. like a, that's like a bio filter <laughs> i need the bio filter in the transporter room exactly that. <laughs> yes, yes. you need a bio that would be cool bio filter help yeah, i mean I, I i know i know about this spell design does this just go on forever like is there any way to stop it no it will end after the number of rounds that his caster level is Oh no! Oh <laughs> <Sorry>. right, <laughs> that's a big number. <laughs> that's gonna be, that's gonna be a really big number. <laughs> and like, if you it's, die to it's it, in the teens. Uh, it's in the yeah. teens, baby. Oh my god! <laughs> and it's not. It's not like a concentration spell on his part. No, 
And if you die Why to it, die? then what happens? Then you you turn into a robot. Is that how that works? Rewire flesh. That is correct. Oh, God. We could use another robot. Oh, absolutely. You can serve drinks while we uh, yeah. adventure. Oh, it's, oh it's, can, can we can we get figure out a fantastic. way to put the button on him? So it's we press the button and he does the Oh, I want a button on I want to put a button on him and press his button. Oh, I want to run robot if the button yeah. appears on Akira's phone. Actually, yeah, it does the well actually I, ha I already have the button. Does the button work? Does Cheddar's button work on Akira? I don't know. You might have to start pushing it and see what happens. Start pressing <laughs> it. I think that's it. We know uh, what you're doing your next robot. turn. That's right. He's like, oh, I wonder if this might do something. The best part is you're going to roll a one, and then Akira's going to blow up. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm probably going to die this fight anyway, so that's fine. It's okay. That's I, okay. Not, let me see. Do I have any personal healing? I thought I had a force field. You guys have, uh, if it is, it's rewiring the inter, your internal organs. I know. That's very it's painful. Like, it's internal. It's there's nothing. It's like you are being turned into a creature. It's like District Nine, only you're turning <laughs> into a robot. <laughs> well, at least in District Nine, you got to use the advanced weapons. Hmm, huh. that's true. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm looking one thing. Give me one second. But they don't have. I don't even think they have to spell magic in this game. I, I don't know. They might. Oh, they do. Uh, I don't have oh, it. Oh, they have it. So, but you don't have it. I was, oh. was going to take it. I was thinking about it too. They have it. I'm going to run. So what's the operative using? Stealth? What's he using? Uh, what are you using? Let's see. He uses stealth. You're using... What's the thing? Oh, you're using your cloak. Who, me? Yeah, it's like a, yeah, a clo cloak leveraging my stealth skill, which is like, like my last roll was like 32. Got it. Okay. Just making sure. Okay, this guy with the tongue, he decides to... Eh, he's just going to shoot him out twice. Misses with a five, barely. Easily hits with a 35. But only the 16 points of damage. But Mo is slowly, oh so slowly, getting beaten down. And now the acid moves on to Mo. Mr. Mo, you must give me a reflex save. Because there's no acid. I want to shake that acid off. Okay, well, give me a reflex save. 17. And I make it 17. Yeah, 17 Woo! does Woo! not even come close to making it. Dang it. Oh. Acid goes on top of you. And it does 4d6. Not that much. If I do it a good shake, do I s some go on this uh, this lizard mo monk guy that's next to me? Nope. Hmm. Another come on. blast. Dude, you're doing the most damage, and he can't see uh, Hiroji. So, Mr. Mo and Mr. Rusty, give me a re reflex save as another explosive blast goes off. So Don't stand happening. in the right. fire. Every round, this is going to happen. Every single round. A one oh, rolls a one. Point. Oh, I moved out of that. And Rusty rolls All right, four. 16. There wow. we go. 28 points of damage. Yeah, we're we're in the raid right now, and we're standing in the flames, getting yelled at the uh, the the raid leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, Mo is in the red. So yeah, is I'm in the red. They, I have an add-on for that in the game where it's <laughs> horrible noises if you stand in anything. Anything is that. On. It's you such a good add-on. I want to. Oh, I've heard of the, uh, the those add-ons. So, yeah, when you're standing at things, it's like it's like a red alert goes off. The yep, clock yep. song goes off. You're like, uh, get out, get. I'm out. actually probably going back to retail. I think I'm abandoning classics soon. Yeah. They're starting to look at logs and be like making decisions. I'm like, dude, guys, this, <laughs> this is so easy. Don't look at logs. It's we one shot everything. It's so stupidly easy. Anyway. Mm. Okay, and he will try to attack Mo. We're actually we're actually in big trouble. I think I think we're in big trouble. We may. Oh yeah, it's all uh, over. Kill the fucking ad. Oh, that was a lot of damage. That was thirty. That was twenty-two points. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, he's in deep trouble now. Mo. Rusty's up. All right. I mean, one of the ads has to die. Clearly. So, uh, using my haste circuit, I'm moving there. 
Uh, I believe Mo can kill the Ad next to him if he has the will to do so. If he doesn't, that's his own fault for taking the damage. So, therefore, the one on the other side of it, uh, the Renzar, which has been uh, apparently the target for Hiroji, is the one I'm going to make my target. So Hiroji will have a little bonus. Uh, so Reznar is my target. Uh, get him. So everyone is plus two against him. Trent Reznar. Now I had 37 plus one, three, 40. You easily bluff him. And then are you shooting him? Yep. Do you get a plus two or four? Plus four. Uh, my, my bonus works for me as well. So. Hit. And Thank everyone has plus four against him. Good job. Three against two. Oh, that. Oh, it takes 10 points of acid damage and standing in acid. Do you wish to stay in the ass? Oh, he's moving off. Uh, you're talking about Mo? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm going to activate my haste circuit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It happens that next turn. take place. Yes. I'm going to... Oh, shit. I cannot attack. Oh, this stinks. I'm going to make a five-foot move and attack this guy. Oh, is that a shame because you can't do your triple attack because he did yeah, all no. that fun stuff to you? Mm-hmm. That was funny. Okay, go. No, that's... You were... You, that's ten feet. You moved too far. Okay, you hit it. However, oh wait, is that where he started? You started where the where the uh, acid was. I thought you moved the acid away so I could select my character. No, I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. Just, just you're in the right spot. That's fine. However, with its dying breath, you suddenly feel your mind being clouded. Give me a fortitude save. And I roll a five for a sixteen. you are flat-footed off-targeted and are mute and can no longer talk. From what? what? What was this effect? As you tried to kill him, he did Sage's Bane. Ah. He clouded your mind and you feel fuzzy in the head. You feel as if you are now flat-footed, off-target and can no longer talk for a certain period of time. It's strange that that's a fortitude save. Um, but that, that's cool. I still, all right. So did I, I haven't moved yet. You did move. You took a five foot step. Oh, I thought I moved back to where I was. Okay. No. Nope. I, no. uh, see, this is why I didn't want, I, th I was trying to move back. I wanted to move, uh, oh, never mind. That's okay. Did you want to go there? Well, now that I'm no, 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 no. Like this is where you were. That's where you were. You were right there. Yeah, I basically wanted to attack first, and when this guy uh, died, I wanted to take my full move action. Well, you said you wanted to take a five foot step, though. You did say yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, all right. You did say that. But I moved my character back. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And Tuttle's up. And Tuttle's looking pretty uh, spry right about now. Well, I mean, I'm going to commit to what I was doing. I'm going to go over to the door. And I don't know if I can if I can do all that as part of one action, or if the data jack is its own thing, or whatever. I'll say you can move over and then pull out the data jack and start hacking the door, and then do it by next turn to make sure it's locked. So, Hiroji's up. He's got a nasty looking ghoul right below him. Yeah, there's lots of options here. All right, so so let me lay some options out. Uh, one is. Let's talk about what Tuttle's doing, because Tuttle's doing something that should work. Like, it's tactically the right move. Is to, it is, it's a good guess that, that, that there's a room there with two doors that's on the right of the map that has more monsters in it. There's two exits from that room. He's at one. The other one is in the previous room with all the trophies. Uh, right now, uh, Akiro is by the double door to this large chamber. So in order to completely, to, in order to uh, fully seal off the supposed monsters in that uh, in that room on the right, not only will the door that uh, Tuttle is working on have to be sealed, but one of those other doors would have to be sealed as well. So one option is uh, I run over to where Kiro is and try to seal the main doors to try to back up Tuttle and his play to, uh, I to isolate us from any additional ads. That's one option. Second option. Kill the ad, Mr. Tongue Guy. Third option, 
I delay because Akira can see where the boss is. I delay my entire turn. I just take a delay action and I replace myself in the initiative order after Akira. So when Akira acts, he'll identify the square where he's in and then I can shoot blind and try and take out the boss. So of those three, what do people like? Well, you know, the tactical stuff is all well and good, but note this. I'm going to, I'm probably going to be dead in three rounds. Um, at most. And Moe's also going to be, we, we have a Mo's lot of gonna be dead problems. soon. Like if I yeah. die, your, your, your chances of winning are way down just because I'm going to, Oh boy. That, that's only the beginning of it. This is, this is what the seventh round, uh, my cloak only lasts 10 rounds. Like that, like yeah, we're, all, we're all, of this, all this, like, all of my, all of my signature move, that's going to go away soon. So yes. that, that's so on top of, so right, right around where, right around when you're dead, my ass is hanging out and Mo is dead too. So, right, so, so, so it's going to be Bob talking strength. his way out. It's going to be the end of the series. <laughs> yeah, right, he's right, going yeah, to yeah, exactly. walk his way out. Which would be a good way because they everyone loves Rusty. If he can, he can join them, you know, um, which he so, might. So, what, yeah, so what that, are you saying? That so what is you like? my win condition, you know. <laughs> exactly. So I don't think fancy is the way to get. Like if more things come in, so be it. Like we're yeah, because because my because my broad thing. Well, let's talk about that because my broad thing is. It's chess. The king is the is, is the is the lich that's flying around, that's making everybody else do his dirty work while he lobs bombs at us. That's the king. You want to take the king. That's the that's the end. Right. That's why I'm attacking so, him now, and I'm attacking right. him until I die. Like that's so, my plan. So that so that that so it's like we kind of have to live long enough to try to try to take him out, uh, and kind of worry about the ads later is what I'm thinking. Right. Exactly. Uh, and so, so that so that says to me, I should delay till after you, so I could back up your attack with another attack immediately when we identify exactly where he is. One rule I'm trying to look up right now, and I don't know how it works because I can't even find my Pathfinder. I mean, my Starfinder core rulebook on my computer. I don't know where it is. But um, what rule? Can you use a higher level spell slot to cast lower level spells? Um, like right now, I'm out of th I'm out of third level spells, but I have fourth level spell slots. Yeah, I like no, I think that's a fifth edition thing. I think I don't think that's in this. I mean, you can do it in Pathfinder as a saucer. I'll look it up for you, but I'm gonna just give this to you to help you out, since and I'm not, I'm not helping, but I am helping in the sense that you guys don't know all your inventory. You guys do have heal healing, like Mo does have some healing. Yeah, I've got a Mark Five. Akira mark three has healing. healing. Yeah, you guys have. A, you guys have, have plenty some. of healer healing. Yeah, you have well, some. You have some. Some. I don't have anything special there. I think only a Mark Five. Akira one. has one thing which he's forgotten. That really? he put in his really? glove. He, that he just literally grabbed, put in his glove, and ran away and never thought anything of it. Do you remember what that was, Akira? Oh, that doesn't narrow it down. Let I, me just uh, tell you. Let me, let me look. <laughs> you see, the man look. who has all the loot really should take a better inventory of his loot. I mean, I know I took that thing from the other room. Right. And what that was, was that something thing? that that was a that was a thing that la that allowed you some uh, like buff to your stats right no and you found a small little spell uh what are they a spell gem it was a gem that allowed you to do something oh well, I for god's sakes is it like you know dispel invisibility or some such and you just no it's, 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 it's i think it was a, a, a level one spell gem is, is, is it in my inventory it is c invisibility there we go interesting but there's it's... only one of them and you have it and it's in your glove so how do spell gems even work they are potions that's what they are so or wands or whatever you want to call so you could basically someone can activate it and then they have seen visibility for x amount of rounds interesting well that's the thing i was going to try and i was going to try and cast the invisibility yeah, like, that, like that like that that's handy but that yeah that's handy but that's not that great to be honest no, it's huge for somebody else. Not so it's, much for it's, exactly. I'm just letting you know that that's, that's in your arsenal. As for everything, and it's else, hard because because it's like because yeah. it's like it's like we're we're in a time crunch, and it's like for him to get that to somebody that's like that's a that's a that's a that's a devil's bargain because that's a round, you know. Like that's, there's actions that are that are going to be taken to do that. The, yeah, the the drop dice it are not being rolled. Just just take no, just drop it at his feet and say, "This is a sea invisibility. Somebody grab it." And that, that's it. Right, and by somebody, it would have to be someone who can do damage. So right, so Mo or Hirochi. Yeah. Second the option, with, I'm going to tell you. The problem with Mo is that he this guy flies. Uh, Second option, I have ranged. I'm tell I have you. ranged. He has he has ranged. He has I'm a soldier. Second I'm a soldier. option, I'm going to tell you. You guys have a lot of grenades, and grenades do not 
uh, sorry, displacement yeah. does not work on grenades. So but I don't think yeah. it, it, it doesn't work on lightning bolt either. Oh, Rusty squandered his grenades. Uh, I, I have smaller ones. Well, there's others. There's others. There's other. I was, I was not entirely impressed with my grenades. Yeah, they're not great, but I am just letting you know. I mean, this is a tricky fight, and you guys want to make sure you are aware of all your options that you know. That I kind, I kind of wish, I kind of wish. Actually, I don't know. Like in hindsight, like well, I don't know. Hindsight is twenty twenty, but I kind of wish we didn't focus on ads, just focus on the boss, like from the start. Yeah. Well, there's only one ad left. I mean, the, it's tough though because I mean, you're, you're going to sit there and miss and miss and miss, and then meanwhile, the ads are going to tear us apart. You know. But then, it, but then it's like kill the ads, and then we still have the same problem. Yeah. Well, you know? uh, just bring the. Invisibility potion over to me, and I'll give you a Mark Three healing potion. I can. Oh, give that's you, a good trade. I can give well, you. I'm not. I can give you three of them. How's that for a trade? Nice. That's a good trade. Um, I need to put on some damage. I'm not like I'm not that much into my hit points yet, and there's nothing directly attacking me. So I'll. I want to keep trying to do damage while I'm still standing, and then when it gets desperate. If you can, if you can do all that trading stuff, uh, because you can see where he is. If you can telepathically identify for me his square, uh, like I can at least delay my entire turn until after you get that information and then have a 50-50 shot at actually being able to hit him with something. And I do have the ability to do telepathic stuff through magic, but what kind of action is yes. that? Free. Like I speak telepathic. Uh, Hiroji like, is like telepathic. Free. Yeah, yeah that's I'm talking. telepathic. That's Hiroji, talking. you can actually okay. send telepathic signals. So I don't think you automatically perceive them unless that's something you upgrade, upgraded. Is that correct? Oh, I have no idea if that's... Allow me to double check. His is racial. Mine is magic. Oh, see, my, my telepathic message spell... See, I'm an idiot. I should have yeah, cast you this, see, see, I, I I have cast this I have. early on. It's, so it's actually it's a 30-foot range, which actually it does matter, but it's a free action, limited telepathy. And uh, same actor, uh, functions in the same manner as telepathy, except we have to share a language. So that like that's telling me that it's, we, we talk. Uh, if he says it's in that square, that also does it, you know. All right, I, I think I, I think I can work some things out here, um, because if I cast um, true. my spell, a version of it is way better than yours. Like it's it's telepathic message has got a range of a hundred plus ten feet per level, and it lasts for ten minutes per level, and it's it's I can I can cast it on everyone. <laughs> like, well, um. For a move action, just get close to me. That would be good, unless you're really yeah. using your move action for something else. That would be no, no. Yeah, I'll get close good. to you. I, the, the the one thing I need to know though is the thing about the spells. I have to see if that's something I couldn't find it. Like, can I'm, I looking, I'm looking it up. You I guys even, keep going. I didn't, I'm looking it up. Find it in Google. Whose turn is it, by the way? Oh, it's is it my it's turn. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's my yeah, it's my turn. I'm, de I'm deciding whether or not I'm delaying my entire turn. I, I think I'm delaying my entire. Well, turn you should. Yeah, around. you gotta delay your turn. That's, uh, that's yeah. I, I would so, say so I, kill I'm the dropping, ad, kill yeah. the ad and move in. But yeah, I know, I know. You, you have a, you, like you have a standard operating procedure of killing the ad, and there's a lot of times there's a lot of wisdom to that. But I'm not 100 percent sure no. if that's if the, considering the time crunch we're under, we're under. I'm not 100 percent sure if that's actually. Okay. okay. Like, it's like, not if, that if much kit, like, we're not under that. We've got, yeah, we're, we're, we've got we're plenty fine. of healing. Well, problem yeah. is I have a dot on me, and it's, yeah, but it's, I've got five Mark Three healing potions. That's that's a you lot. Better of drink, you better drink. All right, you know right what? I'm, okay, so so here's now, what. John, Mo can't talk. I'm just letting you know. That's All right, true. So, uh, All right, well, a lot of talking. Uh, I right, had so a lot of talk that, that answer, there. That answers that question. Yeah, but I that, got those we, we discussed a lot of good things recently in game. But uh, that's true. In that's real true. life, it was six months ago. So. <laughs> oh no, no, I'm not saying you don't know then of this, but just do keep that in mind. Like you are me. Okay. All right. Oh, but I I could talk to him telepathically. Uh, oh. Right. So I I like. As well, far as no. I'm Actually, that's you can talk to him. You are unable to use any wisdom-based skills or communicate through any means whatsoever. Oh, I see. So his is. brain, his mind is addled. Uh, yes, so it's like, it's like I look into, oh. like I tried to talk to his to his mind, and his, his mind is talking gibberish at me. That's right. He has a brain okay. cloud. Brain he has a, that's cloud. Right, cloud. He's got a mo <laughs> cloud on him. All right. So, in lieu of anything better, uh, I am not going to delay my action. Because it seems like you're going to do a lot of other stuff anyway, and I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Rusty's plan. And after all of that, this turn we have this, this was a good discussion. But after all this, I am going to try to take out the Renzar. So let me let me Sounds do that. Sounds good. All right, uh, you have plus four to hit it from me. 
Meanwhile, uh, I think, I'll, I think I will shoot still and trying to lock that door. It's like long active discussion is going Does on. Does a 27 deceive him? <laughs> <laughs> you rolled a, a one. D20 <laughs> plus 26. Yeah. Uh, you're trying to uh, flatfoot him? No, it is not even close. Wait, isn't there something about right, so, so so automatic it. ten? It. Isn't it automatic at this level? With oh, your... he might get that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, get that, oh, really? Right? I gotta take ten. Yeah, take, take it. Yeah, I gotta I take ten option. I'm I think you get a ten yeah. always. Like, uh, oh, okay. Well, then I'm doing that. Of course, he might have that. He might have that. It might be what I'm. Because that's like because 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 a ten is a ten is a thirty six. Yeah, because I was remember at low levels, I was complaining about that a lot, and then I was like, "Oh, I get this at this level." And that were you complaining about something? We never heard that would that. actually that would actually really speed things along too, because you could just assume it's a thirty six always, unless we you know like remember what that was always called. Do that. It should be on your character sheet, so. Well, I, I, I if if it's on my character sheet, I would have seen it. Like some ability that says here we you, go. An attempting a skill check with a skill which you have a skill focused feat, you could take ten. Even if stress or distractions would normally prevent you from doing so, spell specialization. Oh, skill that, that's master. great! Yeah, absolutely. I have two goddamn skills focuses in stealth, mother. Exactly. Okay, so 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 I, as I'm I'm officially rolling ten from now on. I'm never rolling a die again. There. All right. So uh, uh, so it's always a thirty-six whenever I do my trick shot. He is uh, tricked. Okay, so now I I shoot him. You're lucky. You barely hit him. You roll a seven. You just that's exactly what you needed to hit him with. I'm sorry. I'm starting to feel like we need some luck. Yeah. It's coming our way. Says Mr. Off target, off kilter, flat footed dude. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 An extra 28. And, uh, oh, and uh, uh, is he flat footed or do I ricochet? I think he's flat footed. He's flat footed until the rest of He's flat footed for me, actually. Well, no. You can use your extra ability to make him flat footed or. Um, he's already flat footed from Bob. Yeah, or off target. Uh, so I don't know what off target means. So I guess I mean minus two to attack. It's a minus two to hit. Oh yeah, hell yeah, he's off target. So off target, off target until the beginning of my next turn. Yep. Okay. Oh, and I run away and hide. <laughs> I I don't think I can do that. Use higher level spell slots. I don't. Think so. I don't think you can either. I looked it up. I don't see anything that says you can. Are you rolling again? Oh, and, and uh, I take ten on stealth, so it's a uh, it's a, thir a thirty five. <laughs> Okay, this will speed things up at least. Akira is up, and you are turning into a robot. Robot, uh, robot, robot. Does not compute. <laughs> hey everyone, Steve here. So, Chris is turning into a robot. You have to admit, Chris is laughing through this whole thing. And Chris is really good about this. Actually, everyone in this podcast is good about that. Okay, Jason, maybe he wasn't so thrilled that Cheddar died, and he was kind of pissed because that was a big part of his character. But I think he eventually handled it quite well and even started to joke about it. It was a big shock to the system because he was planning so much to do with Cheddar in this fight and that he dies in the very first round that now we have Chris who is, he's going to die. I mean, seriously, he is going to die. Now, one of the things I wasn't sure about is he does have damage reduction slashing, and this damage is slashing, but it says melee slashing damage. That's how damage reduction works. So is this melee? It's a spell effect, and it's happening on the inside of his body. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, it's really something to do with, like, this armor and him being able to move around and deflect the blows. But if you have a spell rewiring your insides and turning you into a robot, I don't think your DR applies. I'm not sure, but that's the way I called it. I also didn't think, well, you know, what's 10 points of damage a turn? That's not going to kill him. And uh, I was wrong. Uh, this thing is going to go on forever. And it just keeps, there's nothing out of it. It's a terrible spell. And I love how he's just playing it up. He talks like a robot for the entire episode and the next upcoming episodes. As long as he stays alive, even when he drops, he still talks like a robot. He's just, he's fully into it. And the best part is, he's not angry. He's not upset. You know, he's just laughing it off. And I think they all are. I mean, no one wants their characters to die. But you know what? If you're going to die, this is where you do it. You do it in the last room, the big epic battle. It's like the Avengers, you know, you don't want to die in the first room. 
or it's like being on Survivor. I always felt bad for the people who got voted off in the first or second round. Oh, those were the worst. But if you make it all the way to the end, the very last round, at least you got that. So these guys are at the end. So if you're going to bite it, you might as well bite it here. This is the best place to have it occur. And Mo, by the way, Mo is really in trouble too. And they do not have healing. This has never really come up before. But they only have a couple of those Mark 3s, and that is not going to heal them that much. And then they have Mark 1s, and that's not going to heal at all. So they are in deep trouble. When they start dropping, that's it. They're really not going to be able to come back easily. Or if they are, they're going to have like 5 hit points when they come back each time. So they're just going to keep dropping over and over again. And they are going to run out of resolve points. So, yeah, this is going to get kind of nasty. Oh, well, let's get to this week's show notes. So don't forget a new podcast every Tuesday and every Friday, and we're going to be starting up the new ones. I don't know when they're coming out, but they're coming out by middle of next month, and I don't know the dates. And as I said on the fall of Plague Stone, I believe, is that there's going to be a time when there's going to be four podcasts coming out at the same time, which might kill me, but I'll figure out a way to do it somehow. Do subscribe to us on iTunes and Android and Spotify. Boy, Spotify, man, I say it every week. I can't get over how big it is. It's really blowing up. I think it's bigger than iTunes right now. Remember to check out Jason's Talking Combat column every Monday and Talking Plague Stone every Thursday. Do join our Discord. You can play games, get free t-shirts and other cool stuff. We're adding more to it all the time. And when you get to level 10, you get a free t-shirt. Just go to discord.rollforcombat.com. Do follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Check out the Reddit channel, and of course the Patreon. You gotta check out the Patreon. The five bucks, you can get the new episodes early. And ten bucks, you can listen to us live and chat with us during the shows. And we do a lot of shows. As you uh, know, we do at least two a week. And they're both kind of secret right now. So one of them, I mean, well, one of them is Extinction Curse, so you can hear us do that. But the other one, top secret. No one knows anything about it. And that was yesterday's recording. I was going to allow people to actually hear what we were doing. But it never got going. Instead, you just got a two-plus-hour session of us just talking about stuff. And I think everyone had a good time. And uh, it was even fun for us just because, you know, we're all friends. And sometimes we are all serious and in the mood to game. And then here we're just talking about, you know, geek stuff. What movies we liked, what books, TV shows, things like that. Just standard geek culture things. Anyhow, with that, I'll talk and see you guys next week. You've been listening to Roll for Combat, a Starfinder actual play podcast. If you have a question or comment for the show, please visit us at RollForCombat.com or drop us a line at contact at RollForCombat.com. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and other social media platforms. been listening to Roll for Combat. Until next week, always remember, Starfinder mimics are alien shapeshifters, our zombies are caused by viruses instead of dark forces, and our magic can be explained as sufficiently advanced technology.